Good marvelous morning. Listen, guys, it's Friday, 8 a.m. We have a lot to talk about. This is not going to be a short video, all right, because we're going to be diving into the changes that are coming. Uh, they already announced that they're going to be announcing uh, when the official launch date for the patch is going to be here within the next few days. Okay, well, in the coming days, they said. But anyway, let's go over the post. They said, hello, Paxian. Last week, we announced that the world of PAX Day is about to be reshaped with adjustments to its geography, distribution of biomes and resources and points of interest. The changes are significant enough that they will require a wipe with the coming update. So this week, let's take a closer look at what our, our team world builders has been working on lately. All right. So first things first, they're going to be reshaping the world. Since the start of early access, you have now roamed through every corner of Gallia. And our world team has received a ton of feedback. Here are a few things that we learned along the way and how it's helping reshape the world in the literal sense. By shielding the home valleys with mountains, we wanted to grant them a sense of coziness. In retrospect, they said that they pushed it a bit too far and they can feel walled in at times. So we're adjusting the new terrain to have a more open and natural feel, encouraging exploration and travel. Many cliffs are now less steep, making mountain climbing slightly less lethal. <laughs> Lord knows I've died so many times from trying to climb. And we added more mountain passes to make moving from one area to another easier. On the lethal side of things, they also changed the fall damage system to make it more predictable, right? So that way you're not, you know, tripping on your shoelaces and just dying. They're lowering some of the mountain ranges, which combined with the other changes, open up some impressive vistas. Don't worry, we're going to look at some screenshots here too, here in a little bit. They're adding details to make a few valleys more unique. For example, uh, zones in Ennis Gallia uh, now have an aqueduct spanning a river. So that's going to be really cool to see um, every single biome or area having its own unique appeal. Here and there in the heartlands, they said that they're reworking rock formations to make them more suitable for building. We noticed that a lot of cool castles were placed in such areas and they were trying to encourage like building in unique places. Lastly, they're enhancing the roads. You'll now see more variety from simple dirt paths to the paved king's roads, and we've increased their number to provide more routes across the land. This will also help reduce the chances of areas being blocked off by new plots, okay, or by a few plots. As an example, in Lavadon, a path from the home valley to the wildlands was easy to block. But now it looks like this, and you guys can kind of see this here how they're uh, improving the entire mapscape. And, and again, we'll get into the screenshots here in a little bit, so just be patient with me for a little bit. Now, as far as landscape art goes, the new map of Galia um, brings an opportunity to enhance how our biomes function, aiming to improve overall progression while making the wildlands and heartlands more distinct. The heartlands now feature a more limited range of three base biomes, along with two advanced biomes. While the base biomes remain consistent across the heartlands, the advanced biomes will vary between different heartlands. So this is going to make it incredibly important that you pay attention to how the maps look in order to select where you're going to be building your base. Uh, trust me, this is only the beginning. And as they continue to re release more regions, volcanic regions, snow biomes, and all that other craziness and new lands and all that stuff, where you build is going to be incredibly, incredibly important. All right. So in the wildlands, uh, they're introducing a new biome, the Corrupted Plains. Damn, I was hoping it was going to be the volcano. <laughs> uh, but this land is tainted by demonic forces where you are more likely to encounter the Cult of Zeb. Now, they're also rolling out several updates to give each biome more character. Ancient trees will now populate enchanted forests like the Whispering Woods. Strange growths will now be found in demonic biomes such as the Corrupted Plains. The trees in the Eerie Pine biome are getting a fresh new look, and music will adapt based on the biome and time of day, further enhancing immersion. All right, so... 
what it sounds like is they're restructuring the entire progression experience uh, from the beginning to where we're at now. Now, I'm curious, though, too, as well. Um, they said wipe, and I know last week that they mentioned that we would be able to keep all of our stuff. So I'm wondering if that's still the plan. And if it is still the plan, are we moving into tier five or are they essentially just redesigning the entire experience and we're still staying in tier four? Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see as they release more information. Now, as you might have noticed from these examples, we've also named some biomes to give them more distinctive identities that better reflect their inhabitants. Rest assured, however, the names of the provinces and the home valleys remain unchanged. Now, as far as that goes, they have a new PvE progression. One major focus for us in the upcoming patch is to allow players to find their adventures earlier in-game. This is huge. As such, the most important changes we're making are to the positions of PvE encounters. We are introducing numerous enemy camps throughout the provinces. Several camps in the home valleys are designed for solo or duo play, making them ideal for early progression. These camps are tied to specific biomes and grouped in clusters of five to seven small encounters. Traditional MMO, boys and gals. Some biomes will have many sites, while others will have few or none. And believe me, we're going to scout all of these. We've also added some entry-level cave dungeons in the home valleys. Additionally, we are rebalancing the distribution of enemies to ensure that it aligns with the respective biomes and creates a more logical progression. High-tier enemies will primarily found, uh, primarily be found in high-tier high zones. In other words, the Cult of Zeb won't have much presence in the home valleys, right? So as you're going through the home valleys, this gives us some starter caves, and we're going through with the easier mobs that are, you know, according to our level, and then you move through. So if you want to do that solo, duo, in a group, team up, go do a dungeon. That's entirely up to you and the way and the pace that you progress. So this is starting to feel like a real game. The Inquisition faction is getting a complete revamp with a new look. And you guys may have saw like a little teaser of that um, as we moved through before how they kind of changed uh, some of the, uh, it, what's that do, Pura and all those guys with the purple and all that. Um, they said it's still a work in progress along with new camps and strongholds. Now, although the Inquisitor Citadels, okay, we haven't seen these yet, aren't ready yet, they will serve as mid-tier dungeons in the future, okay? Now, the Lost Souls, our ghostly enemies, are, are being progressively redesigned and will now appear in haunted biomes, both in the Wildlands and select home valleys. So I'm assuming these are going to be the higher tier, and my guess they'll, they'll probably be around level 20 or 30-ish. Well, we'll have to see how that's going to play out. And they said that the map has been updated with new icons indicating which factions control enemy camps and ruins. And new icons for customized marks have been added. Overall, these changes aim to make, uh, or excuse me, to create a more natural PvE experience with a clear progression that rewards exploration. They said that we can find more screenshots here, and you know we're about to go right up in there, Okay. Uh, but before we do that, though, they said here at the bottom that they will be providing a date for the patch in the coming days. So stay tuned, which will, this is probably next week, sometime, probably Monday, Tuesday, maybe maybe Tuesday or maybe next Friday. I don't know. We'll have to see. But let's go ahead and, and, and get into these screenshots. So as we dive into these guys, uh, you guys can see uh, the new maps. This is Marie. Um, you guys can see that it, it Marie has changed quite dramatically. Um, just in terms of the distribution of sites, just the way that everything kind of flows and works. And we're going to have to really dive into these and see, unfortunately, we are not in Marie. The only thing that we were concerned about in Marie overall was the tier five dungeon, right? Cause we love, love, love that dungeon. Now I'm curious to see if the dungeons have changed at all, or if that's going to affect our, uh, progression overall, or maybe we need to find a new dungeon or have they changed the layout. So I'm curious to find all of that out as we get into the game. But let's get into these other uh, provinces here. This is our province. This is going to be uh, Ancient. I'm still mad as hell that they ain't showing the bottom of the map, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, why why you guys hiding lioness? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Uh, but again, um, you know, as we move through this and we start to look at these changes, guys. Oh, here we go. Bottom of the map. It, oh, no, this is in this galley. But... <laughs> As we get through this, guys, or to this, 
Uh, you guys really need to start thinking about where you guys are going to be building your base. Um, again, as they continue to release more and more information, um, it's going to be incredibly important to think about where you're going to position uh, based on the things that are happening. Now it seems that they're moving more towards a style where, you know, the, the three of the Heartlands were kind of the same or the basic formula for the Heartlands is kind of the same. But we're going to have to really start to look at like how that changes or how rapidly that evolves the moment that you leave the safe zones and how that's going to change and how that's going to transition us um, into PvP and the feudal system here in the future. All right, so let's go to the next one. And this is last but not least. Uh, this is, I don't know where that Karis. Okay. I've, I've never, I've never even been here. I don't think, <laughs> but I know a lot. There were a lot of complaints that I heard about Karis, just the way that it was structurally with everything that was going on, uh, from the looks of it. Again, I have nothing to really compare this to, uh, but I'm assuming that the, the overhaul for this map is good as well. Cause the one for Antion where I've spent all of my time is absolutely crazy. Now, you guys can see here some of these screenshots, like these changes to the ruins. Um, I think I remember where this was at, because this is where we first started uh, trying to solo dungeons. I, I, I think, I'm pretty sure that's Ancient, but I could be wrong. Um, and then you guys can see some stuff here, how they kind of lowered uh, the valleys, and or excuse me, lowered the mountains in the valleys, and they also made the roads and the pathways a lot more pristine. Now, what I'm curious about, though, too, is if they are going to allow us to do this. Now, the crazy thing about this, if you think about this, is that as we continue to move through these updates, you, are you starting to notice how it's starting to look like civilization has been here? So it, it, it's crazy because when we first came into this game, it was just like all you saw was ruins, right? And we had to establish this new place. And now that population has it has been existing in this world, it's starting to look a lot more refined, almost as if the world is taking a natural progression on its own, which is pretty cool. All right. Now, um, as we continue to do this, here's some more advanced roads. I'm assuming this is going to get crazier. And like I said, I'm curious if we're going to be able to build our own roads or and or paths especially as we start getting into like higher tier PVP zones and having to transport goods with like wagons or mounts or so on and so forth. But I'm curious to see how all of that is going to pan out. Now, uh, as we get into the next things, this is just the, the image of some of the castle stuff that they were playing with. Um, so you guys can kind of see how you'll have uh, more opportunities to build stuff in strange places or cool places. And uh, what are we what are we looking at here? This is oh this is Lavadon. Um, this is a Lavadon before and after. Okay, so oh yeah, okay, so this is the before. Excuse me, I was I was confused as hell. And this is after because you guys can see oh wow that actually looks crazy good. Like look at the scene on the horizon, and then look at the ruins that kind of lead into the to the past here. Oh that's actually that's actually that's actually crazy. Oh my god okay all right all right and uh let's see hold on let's look at this okay that's before and this is after okay with the the new monster distribution did the uh oh they oh they widened the whole lake and then the river pathways are moving oh okay Okay, trying to prepare us for oceans. Okay, I see you. And these are some screenshots of the new landscape. That's nice. You guys, look at that building over there on the right. That looks good. And then it looks like cactus? Uh, okay, so the world's going to start to be more populated. I'm curious to see what type of creatures are going to be adding within the ecosystem as, as time you know moves on. Um, especially as we you know start to get into fishing and... And uh, animal husbandry and all that good stuff. Uh, okay, still with the cocoons, though. Um, so we still don't know what those things are. Uh, it looks like they're in a more refined building now. But, like, what what the hell are those things? All right, so it looks like we got some nighttime stuff here. Happy Halloween. And this tree looks crazy. Now, the real question is, is can we cut them down? Or, or if we cannot cut them down, can we build in them? Okay, because that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, this is, takes me back to Ark and my survival experiences. Now, here's some stuff for the Zevians. You guys can see some of the camps. Uh, some of the props have improved. Just the overall design, the flow, the function. 
Uh, you guys can see uh, the little statues with the demons in them. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I already clicked that one. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one we just looked at. Okay, let's see what else these camps look like. Okay, so this is uh this is giving us a much better idea of what this is looking like. I don't I'm assuming that's a player actor here. Uh no, these are enemies. These are the new inquisitors. Oh, with the cross. Okay, so confirmed that's the new inquisitor camp. Whoa. Okay, these look much better than they used to. Okay. So I'm I'm curious I know they mentioned like the difference between group and solo, but I'm curious to find these. And see what they look like. But the designs of the enemies look amazing. They look so much better than what they did. <laughs> they don't look all super jank. I, okay, so I'm assuming this one here is probably a solo camp. Uh, where you guys can just kind of focus on these. Okay. That's pretty cool. Alright, I'm assuming this one could potentially also be a solo camp. I'm assuming one tower. But that could just be the entry point. Man, I'm hoping that they give us props like these that we can put in our bases. Yeah, this looks like a solo camp, too. Um, and then, all right. And what's this one? This is just the front side of the tower. This is going to be good for YouTube screenshots. The Lost Souls have changed. Okay. Well, that's cool. I definitely, we did, de I, we, we definitely got to get over here and check these out. I'm curious to see, yeah, because, because, can you guys look at them? They look like they're just uh, ghosts of old soldiers. Like, they're not like that uh, <laughs> Casper the Friendly Ghost look that they had before. This is going to be pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to fight them, especially with the new combat system. All right, but listen, let's go ahead and get into this, this map legend here. Uh, with the map legend... Let's see. Uh, I'm going to try to squint and read these from at the top. Uh, let's start at the locations. So the symbols, which I thought was going to be spiders, which is apparently not. Damn. Super sad about that. Uh, we have an Inquisition. The little uh, helmet looking thing is the Lost Souls. And the Zebians uh, are the spiders. So... <sighs> I was hoping for creatures because Alpha 1, it was like silk. I'm like, spiders, silk. We're definitely in there. T5, baby. Let's go. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's not what it's looking like. Uh, I am curious to see what new enemies and creatures are going to be adding for resource implementation. Or, like I said, if they are going to wipe the map, are they still keeping us in Tier 4? Uh, which I think would be a really strange move. But we got to wait and see what's going to happen. Now, let's see. The Petra Day, we have the smaller Petra Day. Uh, your remains if you die, landmarks, quarries, uh, standing stones, which uh, were completely empty before. But we're definitely going to have to check those out. We have a ruined mill. We have caverns, ancient ruins of different tiers, imperium ruins of different tiers, all the way up to tier 5. And then the border fortress. Okay, so... Border Fortress. Um, okay, so I'm I'm assuming what the Border Fortress is. That's just gonna be, that's gonna continue to be the gates and the broken ones. I'd imagine are going to be repaired over time, especially as they continue to release new regions. Uh, you guys can already see the new uh, implementation of the symbols that we can use for the map markers. And if you guys can, if I could draw your attention to the top left of the map in the screenshots, they sh they showed us two different versions. Okay, one of the versions was 5.9, and this version in this screenshot is actually 6.049. So, they're still quite a bit ahead of us <laughs> in terms of where we're at. Uh, but I'm curious to see like what the implementation is going to be. Um, I'd imagine every single Friday it's going to get spicier and spicier as they reveal more and more details. I'm hoping next Friday is going to be patch notes because that's what we're really, really going to dive into. But I really, really need you guys to start thinking about where you guys are going to be building your bases. And I'll be getting into videos uh, about that here soon. But 
with that being said, guys, I'm super duper excited for these changes. I'm excited that they finally said that they're going to be announcing when the update is going to be coming here pretty soon within the coming days. So it's going to be exciting to hear that. And uh, I'm excited to finally get back in the game and do some PvP and check out the new combat system and really just explore and see the new environments and check out the new enemies and get into some trouble. But with that being said, guys, tell me what your favorite part about this is. And let me know if you guys are excited to finally come in and play this game the way that it was meant to be played. And with that being said, guys, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you guys are looking for the Ultimate Gaming community to join, you guys can find a link to unhinged.gg in the description box below. And uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy, Damone, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.